Hello and welcome back to Cosmic Law, where today we're going to speak a little bit about hieroglyphs and particularly one that's pronounced the letter T. And when I first came to Egypt, I was so amazed to go into the temples and see all these beautiful, beautiful carvings. And of course, what I focused on was the figures and learning who is there. Oh, that's Isis, that's Osiris, that's Horus. You know, you learn the names through looking at the pictures and you feel proud that you can recognize these uh, netters. But at the top and over to one side is this big gray area that is totally invisible at first. You see it, but you just gray it out. And that is the area of hieroglyphs. It's often even bigger than the area given to the images. But as a beginner, it's too much to take, literally too much. So after years of study, I've began to get more and more interested in the hieroglyphs. And today I just want to share some of that about one of the letters that's pronounced T. The word hieroglyph comes from the Greek, meaning sacred writings, but the actual Egyptian name for them was the Medu Netas. And since this channel is about the Netas, it's about cosmic law, it's very significant that their writing is called the Medu Netas. These are the words of God, the words that God created the universe with. And each one has their own multidimensional meanings. And today we're going to get into this one, which is pronounced T. Now, Egyptologists call this hieroglyph a loaf of bread. And in fact, in their interpretation of the hieroglyphs, there are all kinds of different loaves of bread and cakes. So it seems that they think in the temples, the people were writing a lot about food. I don't think that's quite right. But let's go on with my interpretation. When the Greek historian Herodotus came to Egypt in the, I don't know, 5th century BC, he said that the Egyptians were the most religious people on earth, and I believe that's still true today. And what that means is, in their belief system, the concept of God was so big and so important that you couldn't live without it. Everything that comes to you, everything that happens to you, good or bad or indifferent, can be traced back to God. And so that principle is so important in the, in the mindset of the people. So the symbol for God, of course, for Ra, is the sun. And in sacred art, it's this hieroglyph the circle with the dot. So whenever uh, an ancient Egyptian saw that symbol, or even something round like that, their first association was to Ra. It's the God principle. So when they see this hieroglyph, the first association is, this is half of the Ra symbol. This is half of God. And what's happened to this symbol is that a line has been drawn horizontally across it. It's been cut horizontally. Horizontal coming from the word horizon. So the horizon sets a boundary of where Ra is visible. And during the 12 hours of the day, Ra traverses the sky in the day bark through the 12 hours. So this symbol is inextricably connected with time. And when you look at the names of the netters, the third netter to appear in the Yunu myth is Tefnut, and she represents time. And in her name we have the letter T twice. T, F, N, T. So twice, at the beginning and end, we have this hieroglyph. In fact, it's used as a female determinative. So all female netters, pretty much all female netters, have their name ending with this hieroglyph. 
Two of the really big female netters are Neith, who we spoke about recently, and Newt, who we'll get to in the Iyunu myth. And both of these contain only one other hieroglyph. With Neith, it's the energy symbol, the wave, and with Newt, it's the pot of Nu. The ancient Egyptians were intimately connected with nature, and as such they clearly saw these signs that I'm speaking about here in relation to the Medunetas. They saw the sun at sunrise and sunset when it's only halfway above the horizon, and that's exactly the shape this hieroglyph makes. So this span of the sun across the day sky is part of the meaning of this hieroglyph. But it also has many other meanings, because when a cat, for example, goes to catch a mouse, it jumps on top of it, it covers it. And so this is the covering. It is that which contains the mouse. When you catch something, you don't catch it like this, unless it's a ball. You catch it like that you entrap it so that it's contained within this shape, okay? So the essential meaning of this hieroglyph is that which contains. So although the hieroglyphs are a different level of study in ancient Egypt, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and when you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And when you want to support it, please click on the button to buy me a coffee below, because that keeps us going here on Return to Cosmic Law. And thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.